As promised, joining us now is someone uh, who's finding it hard to get a run in what we call mainstream media. I'm almost inclined just to rename them Nazi hunters in their own lunchtime. Um, she's someone who was on last week. They're going to laugh out of you. Her name's Chantel oh. Baker. Her name is Chantel Baker. I've been looking for a good descript journalistic descriptor of you, Chantel. I'm going to say new wave citizen journalist is uh, what I've got to call you because that's basically what you're doing. Um, thanks for coming back and joining us again. Um, oh, th thanks for inviting me. Love the description. <laughs> um, your uh, appearance on the platform has generated some comment, I must say, but what generated an awful lot of comment across all social media platforms this weekend, you were trending number one for a fair time on Sunday, is the fact that you have been removed from social media uh, platform, and we're going to call it Facebook because I think Mark Zuckerberg just changed the name to Meta to confuse us, all right? So you're off Facebook, Chantel, which was, looking at your numbers, which are better than mine, you rotter, 97,000 followers or something, that was a pretty important forum for you to share information and interact with people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my account had been restricted from about a year ago. As soon as I spoke out and they, they heard the word vaccine when I was interviewing vaccine injured people. So they started to restrict it a long time ago, but I hadn't had any marks against it for over seven months. So it was very interesting that this happened directly after Fire and Fury and directly after the contact that stuff made with Meta um, to try and talk about my account and relate it to the protests in Parliament. Okay, now you have said suggested, have you not, Chantel, that your removal from um, Facebook was the result of a campaign or a complaint or petition from staff? Yeah, absolutely. I believe it's directly correlated, yeah. Okay, I'm here this morning. I hate to do this because I've been doing some journalism stuff to tell you that it isn't. Okay. Because I have directly talked to very, very senior people and stuff, and they have said that apart from the journalistic inquiry, which itself was coached, was couched in negative terms towards you, apart from the journalist inqu journalistic inquiry that they made to the management of uh, Facebook, um, they did not lodge a complaint against you, report your account or do anything else. Um, yeah, but as you as you said, though, the way that they approached Meta was in negative terms. Mm. And back in January, Paula Penfold, the direct journalist who did contact Meta, wrote an op-ed talking about how she'd become misanthropic towards people who were unvaccinated in New Zealand. This was in January the yeah. 9th, I believe. And misanthropic means she's a hatred towards people yeah. who are unvaccinated. So I would definitely like to see what stuff had written, as I mentioned. They wrote that piece to me, so they got a reply, and then my account was banned, having no previous anything against it for seven months. So you can say that it, you can say that oh, they didn't they didn't do a, a full complaint against me. Okay, I, what I'm going to do in the in the in, in, in the interest of transparency, I'm going to read you the exchange I had because when you made that claim on Sunday, I thought, wow, that would be as a journalist participating in a social media witch hunt like that. And I, I, I'm not going to disagree with you that they have basically fanned the fire and gathered the mob, mob together and handed out the pitchforks. Well, I think it's more than that. I think it's even more than that because you can say gathered the fire, but they created a fire that didn't exist because they created this narrative that I was pro-violence and that I had something to do with the violence mm -hmm. being instigated at Parliament. Mm -hmm. And the entire time I was at Parliament, I was telling everybody to be peaceful. Any comments that I had about Parliament was to be peaceful. So they created a narrative. They created a fire. They stoked the fire. They then pushed the fire out to anybody they possibly could. And they got a reaction from the people that are essentially meant to be the firefighters. So it's it's been a direct it is a direct correlation of stuff. I'm more than happy to say that. And okay. as I mentioned to you on the platform the other day, we are going to have lawyers looking into what our options are as well. Okay. Well, I wrote to Sinead Boucher. I texted her on Sunday after your claims. I said, just trying to clarify claims, that stuff, campaign to have Chantel Baker banned from Facebook. Apart from journalistic questions about her content, was there actually a complaint about her from stuff or a petition. 
And this is what Sinead ba Boucher replied relatively quickly. Absolutely no truth to that one. No idea where the claims came from. Uh, but in the past, many false claims about stuff's content or actions have come from Chantel herself. Um, <laughs> and actually, just saw the New Zealand Herald reporting her saying this, but removed it after seeking comment from us. So there you go. Um, so I I'm just doing that so that everyone knows you know, what the exchange is. Yes, been. well, I mean, I've seen, I've seen the level of journalistic integrity coming from Sinead Boucher's stuff recently, and I'm not overly impressed by Okay, it. give us another so example. Take with a grain of salt. Give us another well, example. I would say the entire, yeah, the entire Fire and Fury documentary is an example of that. And then the new miss, actually, actually, another example I would say would be the attack on the candidates that are standing for local council, because it looks like that could be in breach of local council guidelines as well, when, with the attacks and going to their houses and, and uh, attacking them for being anti-vaxxers, as they say, even mm. though the candidates have not come out publicly and mm. said that. So there is a campaign against people Shantel. by stuff for making yeah. different medical decisions in this country. And they've been very, very clear on that, especially recently. Yeah. Chantelle, I have to say that I, I agree with you, and I've watched that scratching my head. Given that a lot of the public interest journalism funding and New Zealand On Air funding is going literally to cover local body reporting, but that seems to have morphed into local body politics reporting. Um, the spin-off just got $160,000 or $190,000 to cover local government, and I can bet your bottom dollar they'll do a lot of Nazi hunting for that, running around amongst candidates. The other interesting thing... Well, I think I think Nazi hunting is not the right word because I don't think people... <laughs> I'm are using it with a grain of salt. Nazis. I, think it's, no, no. I think it's more of a witch hunt. Yeah, you've got, yeah. To, you've got to get my sense of humour here. It's ironical because I think that's in I their mind... I just mind. want to clarify that, that I'm not agreeing with... Them. OK, all right. Um, but there is this campaign to out candidates that mainstream news media don't like quite clearly, or have problems with. And it would just seem to me, um, and there are all sorts of people standing for local body government that I wouldn't vote for, uh, particularly here in Wellington. We've got a former Green political advisor who says she's independent and his great friend's former senior advisor to James Shaw. She's running for mayor. We've got a guy, another guy running for mayor. The guy will probably win it. He's a Labour MP and he's not even quitting the day job while he's standing for mayor. So there are some interesting double standards going on here journalistically. Chantel, can I ask what sort of reaction have you had to the Facebook ban? And did they communicate to you specifically what pieces of content or what it was that you had said that got you the ban? A day before they took down the they flagged the the post that that's still live on Instagram if people want to go see it and it was protesters that were holding signs against the mandate saying why they were at the protest and I wrote a post saying that I this is why I defend the protesters because these were the people that I met they were kind and they were loving and yes there was some there was violence from certain individuals and there was also violence from the police and I don't condone violence of any kind and so that post was flagged after the report came out from stuff and after the article came out with that asked me to for comment and then within 24 hours the entire page was down which is something that has never happened before did you comment that well, i'm still in did, contact did, with did, did, at the moment. Did, did you provide them with some feedback did you try and talk to them about that Yes, I'm in communication with them now. Um, whether or not that gets anywhere, we'll just see. I mean, I'm I'm not overly worried, to be honest. My followers have just gone up on Instagram and YouTube ever since then, and I think they're going to get even more. It, it's, it just grows. The minute you try and silence people, their platforms just grow independently because no one likes to be told they can't hear someone that they're interested in listening to. Yeah, um, it was interesting uh, hearing, a, hearing a piece on RNZ um, uh, that had Paula Penfold on talking about fire and fury and she explained basically how she's tweaking the rules of journalism and didn't need to talk to you and then she had a crack at the platform but obviously if you're using those rules, anyone you're kicking, oh, they don't really <laughs> qualify. So I never got to write a reply from Radio New Zealand, which we, oh, look, I, actually, honestly, I can't be bothered. Um, it's more fun just taking the <laughs> mickey out of them. But um, she, yeah, so, I mean, if, if, if Paula Penfold thinks... And if stuff, as you believe, thinks they are, they're taking you down, 
It just seems to me it's all rather counterproductive. If I were literally that worried about you, I would simply ignore you. I'd never mention you. I'd never mention you in a story. I'd never mention what you were doing. I would starve you of oxygen. It would seem to me that Fire and Fury, uh, and certainly as regards you, has had exactly the opposite effect that it wanted to. I imagine your social media following has grown and what you feel is support for you has also grown in the last week or so. Yeah, lots of people have been reaching out and the followers have been going up. And then I, re I released a Shopify account, a store that wasn't actually meant to be released until our full platform is. But I released it early just for a laugh, to be honest, because I find the whole thing quite entertaining. I just think it's a bit ridiculous that you're trying to silence someone that hasn't had extreme views. Um, but So I, I released all these T-shirts just basically kind of taking the mickey out of it because I just thought it was quite Well, funny. you're taking the mickey out of trans, honestly, trans, yeah, yeah, about transphobia, yeah. weren't you? What does the T-shirt the say? It says, oh, no, it's not about transphobia, not at all. It says, I'm no biologist, but I know what a woman is. Yeah. And what is but the point of... transphobic. What's the point of that T-shirt? What's the point of that T-shirt, Chantel? I'm really concerned about women's sporting and I'm really concerned about women's rights in prisons at the moment and I'm really concerned that women are being t taken, the actual essence of womanhood is being taken away and it's been eradicated to something that's meaningless and the problem with that is there are physical attributes that women have that are different and we're not allowed to have that conversation anymore it seems so I wanted yeah. to make a t-shirt that shows how ridiculous that is. Alright, okay. Now the new platform, oh gosh I'm going to have to talk to the trademark people. Um, that's why we chose the name, because it's ubiquitous, our name. You're calling it, what is it, <laughs> Operation People? Operation People, yeah, because I feel like the media, the police, everybody seems so focused on everything outside of the people and how we can look at the best ways to serve our community. So we thought we'll call it Operation People and be 100% focused on the people of New Zealand and internationally that have great stories to tell and interesting views. All right. Um... And as you said, probably you're doing this faster than you wanted because of the Facebook ban and Fire and Fury push you down the road a bit, actually. And they've given you a ton of free publicity, I would note, as well, which is kind of I mean, of it's remote. almost like Red Bull gives you wings, you know. I didn't really want to drink the Red Bull that day, but it happened, and now we just seem to be kind of flying. So it is what it is, and we'll just take it as it comes. And I'm not worried. I mean, I have this deep belief everything works out how it's meant to. So, sweet, if this is the marketing we're meant to get... It is what it is, and like I said, we'll see if we can do something with the lawyers in the future. Okay. I've got a, a text here, Chantel. It says, there seem to be multiple accounts for Chantel on social media. Can you point us to the right genuine, pl genuine ones, please? Thanks, Stephen. So if people want the real Chantel Baker, where do they go right now? If they can go onto my Instagram, Chantal Baker NZ is the handle. So a lot of my handles are Chantal Baker, all one word, NZ at the end. Um, and that's that's most of mine. And But just check my Instagram. So I've got all the links up there for Telegram, Instagram. I've got Rumble and Odyssey, which I don't really use that much. Um, but we're going to be doing a lot more live streaming on YouTube because we've got a lot of other people that we're connecting with that do a lot on YouTube. So that's going to become a bigger forum for us. Well, I'll videos. be honest. How long do you think before they come for you on YouTube? <laughs> well, no, so YouTube, it just depends. Like, obviously, on Facebook, at the very beginning, a year ago when I started the page, I did a lot of work with like, when I was telling people's vaccine injury stories. Now, Facebook doesn't like to admit that anyone's been injured, even if ACC has acknowledged them. So those stories don't get told. Um, and those stories will very quickly, they start to just reduce your viewers in a page. Um, on YouTube, I haven't put out hardly any videos. So live streaming protests and things like that is not, there's nothing that will get it taken down. It's more so if there's if it looks like there's been a direct correlation between injury. All right. Um, Chantel, have there been... You, you look, you, I love your attitude, and that is that you're upbeat and you say, let the bastards come for me and I'm still here. Um, but there must have been some negatives, there must have been some nasty things said, and it is possible the way that these groups... And I'd hate to say it, um, my former... Well, my colleagues in the news media act... Um, they are literally looking for ways to take you down. It can't have all have been beer and Skittles in the last week. Uh, honestly, it actually has been. Like, weirdly, it has been. I got upset, I think. I mean, we were still filming. Like, all of this came out. It all happened. We still had stuff to film. So I did my lives filmed, and then I was upset for about an hour. 
And then I just drank some wine. I had a good cab sav. <laughs> and then we had to get up on the roof and do some cameras and that kind of thing. So by the end of it, you're like, right, you just move on. Like life life is short. I've always held the page relatively loosely. I mean, I never wanted to be a social media person. So it all really happened completely on its own back. It's not something that has been like my, my life and my blood. I don't, I don't tie my self-worth or self-esteem to it. So genuinely, we're just keeping on going. We're just doing our videos. We're doing all the work that we do. And I'm excited because if anything, it shows people that they are going to come for you just because of freedom of speech, because I've not said anything dangerous or anything okay. scary. But that, that's my real question is why am I dangerous to them? Um, Chantel, what's happening here doesn't go unnoticed around the world. Indeed, indeed I don't know that there is any here and there delineation on, on social media. Have you been approached by what we would call right-wing groups or, say, Trump-associated uh, groups in the United States? You might have heard the buzz around you in the last week here in New Zealand. No, I haven't. Not that I know of. I haven't che I've got three different emails and I haven't checked them all, but... No, not that I know of. I mean, would I be willing to talk with big international groups? Absolutely. If it helps get the message of what's going on in New Zealand out there, definitely. Mm. And still no invitation uh, from Paula Penfold, from Radio New Zealand, for anyone else who's running Fire and Fury. No invitation or attempt to engage with you in any way? No, and that's what I would call journalistic integrity's degradation at its best here in New Zealand at the moment. All right, when are you going to give me an answer on the job offer? <laughs> when, I've, when I've decided, when I've made okay, up my mind. Okay, all right. <laughs> hey, Chantel, thank you uh, for your, your time this morning. As I said, I did want to tell you that Sinead Boucher says we didn't specifically come for you, but they're clearly sipping champagne mm. at the fact that you've been deplatformed. <laughs> I, I still can't... Is, I, yeah. did, did, does Mark Zuckerberg own Instagram as well? He does, yeah. And you're still up there. This is weird. Uh, I've got my tricks. <laughs> All right, Chantel, thank you for taking the time uh, to talk with oh, us. Thank uh, you, Sean. Openly and honestly, this morning, that is Chantel Baker. Citizen New Wave Journalist is what I'm going to call her. Um... So there you go. This is the story that Paula Penfold won't tell you because she's tweaking journalism, you know, where you try and get all sides, all sides of a story. Paula got upset about something and she got uh, Broadcast Journalist of the Year or something at the Voyager Media Award, uh, Awards over the weekend. Good on you. Congratulations. Pity then that having won that award, Paula, you're not practising better journalism. And I heard yesterday on the RNZ thing that was talking about Chantel and other stuff, fairly heavily edited, I think, so I wouldn't sue them. I wouldn't sue you, I'd interview you, which, and I'd engage with you, which for our new mainstream media seems an horrific thing. Um, Sean, it's not the out uh, Chantel, it's not the outcome that's important, it's the conflict. Um, what do you think of Facebook taking down, down Chantel Baker? And it always... Look, I looked on Twitter and I looked on Facebook yesterday. A lot of people claiming they're the ones that complained about Chantel Baker. So I don't think we can put this down to Stuff or Paula Penfold. But Stuff and Paula Penfold and the Fire and Fury piece made people aware of Chantel and therefore she becomes a legitimate, woke, lovey, snowflake target, right, is really what happened. Um, and, you know, I guess we're going to get called Nazis too, Um which, of course, we are not. Um, and we're just going to keep not fighting the fight, just covering, just doing journalism, just doing media the way it's always been done.